far off past the edge of Federation space, a meeting has taken place. The men talk with each other. It's too late now. It's already underway. The robot looks between both of them, probing the situation. Is the money been sent? Everything's paid for. What's our... Don't worry. We'll be done before it's even known. You'll have your prize. Around the same time, a war was breaking out. The starship Voyager had took in casualties. Some being had jumped onto the hull from out of nowhere and began burning the through the ship. It was monstrous. In the meantime, the Enterprise was at the beginning of something they never would have guessed. Counselor Deanna Troy had stumbled across something. There was this light, this tube, inside a glass dome. Without even thinking, she was holding it. It sat there above her hands. It ignited. Huge flashes of light flew everywhere. It burst bigger than the ship. Huge. It continued to grow. Massive. Her brain became twisted and locked inside the immense size of it. Her telepathic abilities had blurred all continuity of anything. It grew and grew. And then it became a huge outpost. It stood there silent next to the ship she was silent she ran to the captain ran to explain what had happened but found no one her brain raced raced as if it was on a car flying. She was on a car. She didn't know where she was, why she was on this vehicle, what had happened. But everyone was calm. Everyone inside was calm. So it's okay. And she remembered the light the beautiful light. It must be okay. She didn't get any sensations off of it. She didn't get any bad feelings. She must be okay. This wasn't some. She's not a... She would have only... So it must be okay. They received the distress call. They set course for the Voyager. They went to the ready room to discuss their options. The team got ready and prepared themselves for the worst. By the time they arrived, they found the Voyager floating lifeless in space. 
huge holes were burnt into it and the crew was gone. They beamed on board and did their reconnaissance when something unexpected happened. A burst, an explosion, a firing. Some a weapon was fired in one of the turbo lifts, throwing off some of the external sensor array. The alert sounded. Then something unexpected happened. A priority message came through. The Bozeman had pulled up on the Enterprise, requesting formal communication. This was unusual, especially in the middle of a meeting. Security staff took off, went to follow standard procedures. The helm took the calm as the commander and the captain got dressed in their attire. This was unusual, uncalled for. Communication was sent to explaining the situation, but apparently this was bigger than that. They went on screen and the Admiral stood before them looking down from this comm ship. I just got orders from the Quadrant Commander. We have just got, we have just collected scans from your ship. The captain didn't know what was happening. There was too much going on. Then, on the front viewer, they got a view of the top of the saucer. It moved down. As it zoomed in, they found two people. One was at Sergeant Lois for aiming a gun at Lieutenant Caesar. Lieutenant Caesar had put on a suit, had closed the suit off, and jumped off the ship, turning into a Marauder class starfighter, an eight foot tall starship, and flew away. This is greatly disturbing, the Bozeman's Admiral Captain said. The captain was lost. I hope you will put a full investigation in on all of this. We will be monitoring and going with our own investigation. The comm was closed. Too much has gone on. Too much had happened. They needed evidence. They needed they needed to find out what was happening on this part of the universe to where so many things could be going on at the same time. The Bozeman took the investigation on the Voyager, leaving the ship mechanics to the captain. It was going to turn out to be a long, long day. Before the end of the night, the Bozeman had become attacked. The same ship 
the same being, the same fire had started and was blowing holes inside the Bozeman ship. It sent out a distress call and they all evacuated. But luckily they were able to get a scan of the being. It was a girl, a fire starter. She had caused the destruction. By the time more ships got there, the Bozeman blew up. There were no casualties. The ship had all jettisoned their escape pods, but the ship was lost. And the fury was gone. Security cams had shown that the system had been tampered with, but by all accounts, it was Caesar who had fired the weapon inside the turbo lift. And they tracked his, I tracked his location all the way to Klingon space. There, he went and was held up in a building and staying there for the next 15 hours. They didn't know what was happening. few hours later, Deanna Troy had missed her shift, and they went in to search for her. When they found her, she was held up in a coma-like state, screaming in her head screaming and screaming locked in the delusion but if you go into her head she was all fine it was as if the doctors say it was like our anti-gravity system two bubbles both occupying the same space one holding one direction and one manipulatable through another direction. She was feeling both lost and scared and happy and content all at the same time. The captain didn't know if there were signs that this was anything to do with the Voyager incident. This all happened around the same time and must have some sort of tie. But without evidence of that, there was nothing that could be done. They were at a stalemate. They couldn't, they had to get the Klingons to find out what was tracking him and get clearance to go in there to find him. Caesar was the answer. They went in and examined the engineering and science team went in and examined the array and found they found an unknown mineral deposit on the from the weapon it was an unknown origin. They also found an isolinear rod that was undetect that was unknown origin either. They had to call in assistance. 
there was a Vulcan colony not far, and the Vulcan said we'd send a science officer to help in your investigation. He got there and determined that the isolinear rod and the analysis of the mineral deposit from the weapon were Cardassian. Security had also detained Sergeant Lois. Curious why this had why she didn't report any suspicious activity when the situation was going on in the early stages. And she said there was no sign. He had fired the weapon and ran off. And by the time she had to catch up, there was no time for her to call for assistance. This didn't sit right with the command staff because she was able to put on outer space suit, you know, an air suit, and follow him all the way out on top, but not put in a communication. There seemed to have been no... She says that apparently he had turned traitor and whatever he did he did to Deanna too because her and the ship get scatterbrained we have to find what he stole because it wasn't as if it was just a marauder it was pretty extravagant this sounded odd a marauder class utensil would be very a very powerful weapon indeed but he held his tongue and restricted her to her quarters they didn't know much about the Cardassians at this time and decided they needed help so they sent out three transport shuttles to go and find a species that knows more about the Cardassians because the Vulcans will only tell a certain angle and Although they do will collect every bit, it's always good to have a species that's there more than a chronological information about a species. It would take hours for this to happen. By the time they get there to Deep Space Nine, They had uh, the Klingons had granted the ship approval to go to the city. When they got there, Caesar was gone. In fact, four others who were supposedly in the building that the censors watched go in had also vanished without a trace. There was no leaving the compound, the building. There was no trap doors leading out of it in any direction. For all they could see, they had vanished. To be continued. Now there's not really enough evidence yet to say who did what, but you know, what would you do versus what do I do? And let's see if we can come to a conclusion together. Because y'all know about the Cardassians more than my crew does right now. 
so you do have an advantage.